everybody, welcome to another episode of Cross Border Talks. Today we are going to discuss the local elections in Moldova, a small country in Eastern Europe, which started to catch much more attention, more attention than ever after the Russian invasion of Ukraine, when a lot of commentators started wondering or analyzing the probability of Moldova getting invaded as well. But Moldova is also an example of how anti-oligarchic forces, anti-oligarchic parties are trying to do some change in a country which used to be totally dominated by oligarchs and fake politicians. So these Moldovan elections were also quite unusual with accusations against Russia uh, trying to influence the final results and with the my, with Maya Sandu, the president of Moldova and her party, fighting to get recognition from the citizens for the efforts she has done so far uh, to Europeanize Moldova, to make Moldova a real partner for European Union and to the oligarchize the social and political life. We will be discussing the outcomes of the elections together with Christian Bolotnikov, who is a journalist of uh, Agora MD, a uh, portal, a Moldovan portal specializing in politics, social issues written by young journalists. Christian is also a historian by education, so he will certainly have a large perspective of what happens in his country. And uh, hello to Christian. Hello to hello. Vladimir. Hello to Vladimir, Vladimir Mitev, the co-founder of Cross Border Talks, who will be asking questions together with me in this episode. Hello, everyone, and um, uh, let me first start with a very general uh, attempt to uh, discuss uh, the outcome of the local elections. Um, first of all, uh, to what extent can these elections be considered success by the ruling party of President Maya Sandu? Uh, what do results say about the society's attitude towards the government and the pro-European course which Sandu takes? Um, and what were the main motivations for voting in these elections? Was it, well, once again, the geopolitical and identity considerations? Was it more um, uh, some kind of reaction to the government policies? Was it some local factors in every region and city which differ from one another? Yes, uh, hello again, everyone. Uh, thank you for the question. So uh, let's uh, start by... Um... Well, from my uh, perspective as a journalist that uh, followed the whole ele election campaign, I uh, have to say that uh, this election campaign was quite, uh, let's say, apathetic. I mean, it wasn't uh, an election campaign with a lot of debates uh, about uh, uh, the local problems. It was more about geopolitics because uh, this is, was uh, the idea that uh, the ruling party thought that it would uh, mobilize, mobilize uh, their electorate to come and vote. Uh, but uh, the final results show that uh, despite uh, the uh, um, uh, calls from the president Maya Sandu that made uh, a national address uh, on Friday evening before elections, uh, despite all the visits that uh, the prime minister Dorin Rechan and uh, other various uh, government members and uh, party members made uh, in uh, some uh, pro-European areas, uh, the results uh, shows in the first place that th there is a quite, uh, let's say, disappointment. Uh, it's a sentiment that it's um, it's Pretty, pretty obvious. I mean, uh, there were uh, some uh, towns and the regions where in 2021, uh, on the early parliamentary election, uh, and the uh, actual ruling party had won a huge uh, victory by 80%, let's say, but uh, during this local election, they haven't even uh, uh, haven't even the, had the same victory. They had like 30% or 40%, for example, is uh, Orhei County, which is uh, known as the uh, Shores um, base, let's say, uh, in uh, Moldova. And uh, there, uh, the ruling party, in, 20, in 2021, uh, they uh, gained a major victory. But in 2023, uh, the results show that they uh, don't even uh, made to um, uh, won the mayor, uh, to whom the 
post of mayor of uh, Orhe City, only a few uh, local uh, councillors they, they got. So uh, these uh, results show uh, in the first place that there is a disappointment that uh, about how a uh, past party ruled the country because let's be honest we had uh, a lot of crisis um, when past came the pandemic crisis was quite over it started an energy crisis it started an economic crisis and after that security crisis and uh, the influence of uh, russia uh, was uh, it's still uh, high because uh, of uh, the oligarchs uh, so uh, could you please uh, remind me about uh, the second uh, question it was i yes, don't know uh, it was um... Uh, to, what does this election show for the attitude towards the government and the pro-European course? Maybe you could also discuss about that. Yes, uh, so uh, the ruling party, as I said, they tried to discuss more geopolitical issue because uh, even during the campaign, there were some messages from like, even from the president, Maya Sandu, there were messages like uh, in the towns or villages where the citizens will elect a mayor that is from uh, Shores party, they want to get the European funds to develop their towns, their villages. So uh, such messages were quite popular. But uh, in the end, we have seen that this geopolitical um, uh, topic didn't work uh, quite well because uh, the people always, I think, in other countries too, but uh, also in Moldova, uh, the local election are first about the people, the people who run uh, their image in the community. It's not about the party from uh, on or on the party on behalf they are running. So with this election, I would say that uh, show that the support for the idea of European integration and the ruling party is still quite strong, but uh, still uh, the ruling party has, uh, let's say, a major setback after uh, two years and a half of uh, uh, government because there are ma uh, a lot of uh, fails in the justice reform, a lot of fails in economy and uh, so on. Um is this the reason uh, why uh, PAS didn't want Chisinau and Bouts, or are there other reasons too for that? Uh, well, uh, my uh, perception is that in Chisinau it looks like PAS they, they probably didn't want to uh, win because uh, first the candidate was uh, like announced too late, and uh, in the second place uh, they even didn't had a campaign where to, let's say, to try to show why uh, the people should, uh, shouldn't vote for uh, the actual mayor, mayor who is quite pro-Russian. Uh, but the reason that PAS didn't, uh, didn't um, uh, won in uh, Kishinev, I think, more is uh, because uh, uh, the um, uh, vote, uh, the presence uh, wasn't uh, so high in uh, Belts. There, I don't think that in uh, the history of Moldova uh, in Bels, any European party made uh, a successful attempt to uh, win the Bels, uh, the Bels city because, uh, uh, for example, Chisinau, when it was created, uh, the whole uh, administrative uh, map of Moldova, administrative law, uh, they uh, in Chisinau put uh, more suburbs that uh, had a more pro-European, pro-Romania, pro let's say, population in the, in the 90s. But in Bels, it was like during the Soviet times. They don't have enough suburbs, that enough uh, citizens that will vote for the pro-European ideas for the uh, pro-West, uh, pro-Western voters, let's say. So in that area, it's uh, very, very difficult. And uh, not they did, uh, didn't only uh, won in Kishina or in Belt, but they didn't won in any major uh, city center of Moldova, major district capital. Yeah, they had a won like in uh, Kahul, but uh, there the candidate who uh, ran, uh, he ran as an independent and he was supported by uh, the ruling party. Uh, in Gagauda, they didn't, they didn't even have a candidate uh, for uh, one of the towns or villages. So uh, it's more about uh, the people uh, who pass, uh, uh, try to uh, promote them as uh, future mayors and uh, councillors. This election was marked by a huge scandal in the beginning, uh, on the beginning of November, 
when Alexandru Mushtiata, who is the head of Moldovan intelligence, claimed that uh, Russia spent uh, 90 million Moldovan lace, which, uh, would co- which would correspond to more or less $5 million, uh, to undermine Moldovan political system, to support pro-Russian forces in Moldova, and to influence, as a result, the, not only the results of these elections, but also the shape of Moldovan political life as such. As a result, Shansa party, which uh, co- translates as Chen's party, was eliminated. Uh, all the candidates of this party were crossed out of the lists. Uh, could you tell us more about this Russian influence, Russian attempts to destabilize the situation in Moldova? And was this event important to in the shaping of the electoral campaign and the election results? Uh, yes, when we are talking about Russia attempts to destabilize uh, Moldova, we don't uh, only talk about uh, these attempts that like they uh, have started only after February 2022, when Russia invaded Ukraine. Uh, it was even before, for example, when uh, PASS came into power in uh, August uh, 2021. Uh, they, uh, we, we, we had this uh, scandal with uh, the gas contract. Initially, the Russians were saying, okay, we will uh, uh, continue to work based on the old contract uh, just, uh, before, just a few days before the contract was going to expire. They announced that uh, we don't want, we want a new contract, and they started to reduce the gas volumes and uh, so on actions and continue during uh, the 2022. Uh, with a huge protest uh, organized by uh, Shore Party and uh, so on. Uh, the government tried to fight with this uh, attempt, uh, and it, we know that uh, at, le- at least the effort was uh, quite successful because uh, right now we are still talking about attempts. Uh, but uh, especially during this election, um, the chief of the intelligence services of Moldova has said that uh, the whole uh, uh, some that uh, Russia invested uh, in the, those attempts, it's uh, from 2022, uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, it's uh, almost uh, 1 billion lei. So it's a huge amount, and this is one, just one detail. A second detail is that uh, even uh, he, Alexander Mustaz, uh, recognized that uh, we don't have enough people to follow all the uh, members of uh, the former short party or all the members that uh, are uh, involved in this uh, operation to destabilize the country, to uh, affect the elections, pro- uh, electoral process. And uh, he, despite the fact that he, uh, try, he tried to ban and to expel the uh, Shansa party from uh, the uh, elections and he succeeded, uh, it wasn't only Shansa party, there were plenty of other candidates, and uh, uh, I have to say that uh, Shor, for example, Shor Oligarch and his team were prepared because, for example, you know, he uh, were uh, the main, uh, the sh- this party leader, Shans, uh, leader Alexei Lungo, a former journalist at uh, Shor Televisions, uh, when he was expelled in that evening, uh, they announced, uh, oh, look, there is no problem. We had another uh, candidate from a no-name party that uh, you should vote for him. And uh, that candidate uh, and another uh, journalist at the show of television won with uh, like uh, more than 50 percent, uh, I mean, from the first round. And uh, even um, this shows that they still have a lot of influence and they had uh, backup plans that the government uh, couldn't or didn't want to uh, advance more further. But in the same time, the decision to expel Shansa party, uh, some analysts say that uh, uh, the decision wasn't quite right, not just uh, based on legal reasons, because uh, they were just expelled a few hours, a few days before election. They didn't even have the chance to go into justice. They did go into justice, but the case is still pending on the, in the courts. But uh, the other reason why this decision was uh, so uh, was a bad decision is that um, in Kishinev, if Shansa would still remain on the ballot, uh, there would be would have been the probability that um, ba- that the votes uh, for uh, Ivan Chaban would uh, have been lower, and there will be a second round. Uh, and this uh, this didn't happen because all the votes go to for Chaban, and then you go to for Shansa Party. Uh, and uh, 
let's say that it wasn't uh, the only action that uh, the government uh, tried uh, did uh, try to do to undermine the Russian influence. They also, in the beginning of the electoral campaign, uh, the Constitutional Court, uh, just uh, days before the beginning of election, election uh, electoral campaign, uh, declared uh, that uh, the law that banned former shore party members to run in the elections was unconstitutional. Uh, in that in the evening, uh, in the morning, early morning, this was quite uh, quite pretty unusual. Uh, the government just issued a new decision by uh, a government. Uh, it wasn't a law; it's quite an order, a decree, uh, by which they again ban the former part, uh, short party members to run in the elections. But uh, all these uh, attempts, uh, all these measures from the government are exceptional and they aren't quite uh, well. Uh, as seen from uh, the European Union, uh, even, you know, uh, we are going to find out if Moldova will uh, get uh, a green light to continue to open the negotiation or not. But uh, the government uh, in this electoral campaign is uh, tried a lot these um, exceptional measures that um, quite undermine the rule of law state. We could say that an exceptional measure was used also when Maya Sandu declared she would not make the Bashkanov Gagauzia, Evgenia Guzul, a member of the government, even though uh, it is a constitutional provision that the head of the autonomous area of Gagauzia should be a member of the parliament of, of the government. Uh, Maya Sandu explained that Guzul was a member of a criminal group, that is, of the former Shore Party, and so she could not, as such, join the government. Uh, what is your take on this situation? Uh, well, in the first place, there, when we are talking about this issue, Maya Sandu didn't have to make or to appeal to any exceptional uh, measures mm -hmm. because uh, all she had... Uh, all she has to do is just to sign the decree and uh, she just uh, didn't want to sign it. So uh, it's just about, uh, let's say, the action of signing a decree. It's not uh, nothing more or nothing less. Uh, but uh, according to some lawyers, this, is, uh, this could be seen as unconstitutional because uh, there is a principle that says that uh, uh, the temporary functions of this quite process should uh, shouldn't last more than, I don't know how months, or shouldn't last more than uh, a year. What Maya Sandu is trying to do is trying to like uh, isolate the executive branch of the Gagawizian government, uh, and uh, the, govern the central government uh, from Kishinev is trying to cooperate only with the local mayors, the local authorities, uh, so uh, that uh, they uh, would, and also would, uh, she is trying not to give uh, to a short because it's basically, Evgeny Gutzul is basically a short party member, a short team's member, um, to give like uh, in another, uh, I don't know how to call it, uh, another stage where she could express his uh, opinions, uh, her opinions uh, in uh, prime time, because uh, the last uh, Bashkan of Gagauzia, Irina Vlach, uh, used to, uh, she used to go to all the government meetings, and uh, in the last... Uh, months of her uh, term, she all, almost uh, at every meeting, she had the uh, tense discussion with uh, the Prime Minister Doreen Chan. So I think uh, is she, uh, Maya Sandu is, try is trying also to avoid such situations. But uh, I think the first reason is just to isolate uh, the executive branch, because there is uh, where uh, the most uh, sure uh, team members are, and uh, there is where they have uh, a lot of power. Uh, these elections will also be remembered for a low turnout. It was 41% in the first round and 36% in the second round. Uh, what does this say about the level of importance, intrigue of uh, the elections? Uh, yes, uh, the turnout is uh, lower and lower uh, by year. Um, I think that one of uh, the reasons why this is happening is that uh, the people just uh, lost their confidence that their vote could, vote could mean uh, anything because uh, the, there are mayors that are running the towns or villages uh, for more than 20 years uh, or uh, the 
after they got elected, uh, both the mayors, both the councillors had some uh, so uh, big dispute that they uh, just uh, they, they just um, are doing uh, what they promised only before the elections. But uh, I also would say that we should look at this uh, official data uh, with a bit of skepticism because uh, this data is based on like an old uh, sets of uh, data. I mean, for example, uh, at every election in Moldova, we're discussing, oh, look, uh, the young people don't go to vote, but uh, the stats, the data on which we know that the young people, the, their turnout is uh, very low, um, is based on uh, like uh, that all the young people are in Moldova, but more than, let's say, 40% are not in Moldova, but officially they are in the country. So uh, officially the turnout is lower, but when you really check how many, let's say on uh, the paper, there are one, uh, 100 young people in a, a community, but only 40 of them are really in the community. The rest is are, they've gone uh, abroad. So the m main problem is that we don't know uh, at official level how many of those 40 Go, uh, went and bought because when you calculate in such way you know that the turnout actually is much higher and uh, but overall i uh, would say that uh, the people the main reason is that the people just lost their confidence because uh, in 2021 the turnout was uh, uh, quite high and this was uh, because of uh, the enthusiasm and the message of anti-corruption for european uh, has worked after uh, two years of uh, pro-Russian government and uh, a pandemic. And, but uh, it's also, I would say that another reason, not a reason, but an explanation or a bit of analysis is that uh, the appeal from uh, Maya Sandu or Dorin Rechan or other party members didn't work so well. I mean, uh, Maya Sandu, even in the second round, I mean, uh, those two weeks that are between the first round of election and the second round. She made a lot of visit in the uh, communities, in the towns or villages where uh, past candidates were in the second round and tried to uh, help uh, the, to help uh, to grow the chances uh, so that they won, will uh, won, for example, Ungeni. And uh, in the end, uh, they still uh, lost. So uh, I think there is also about that uh, the people just lost their confidence in, uh, in the whole electoral process because of a lot of scandals. And uh, let's say another thing is, uh, for example, when PASS was in the opposition, they all, almost every time accused the government party that uh, they are using administrative resources. And uh, now PASS was doing the same. So there is another uh, piece of evidence that uh, help us to see why the people lost their confidence in the whole process, because it's not like an independent one. It's not like when you have, where you have real chances to um, see your candidate uh, winning. Okay, so we see that uh, the local elections um, put a slap in the face of the ruling coalition, and maybe they now have to find some way to uh, show their, their policy remains relevant. Uh, thank you for this uh, cross-border talk, uh, Christiana, and we'll be certainly following further the difficulties and the tests before uh, change in the uh, Republic of Moldova. And I invite our listeners to uh, continue to follow us on social networks and to subscribe on our various channels at YouTube, SoundCloud, Substack, etc.